calling in from today. Uh, tell us where you're calling in from. Tell us where, um, what kind of job or industry that you are targeting. And um, also we're gonna have you drop in your LinkedIn URL. So Jason just dropped it in for us. Thanks, Jason. And when you drop in your LinkedIn URL, uh, the best way to get your the URL and make it a clickable URL is to jump out to LinkedIn. Maybe you're on your computer, you have a browser window open. Um, copy your, your URL and drop it right here in the chat. So uh, that's the way to get us going this morning. Each of you can meet with each other. Uh, you can connect with each other on LinkedIn and uh, feel free to connect with people through messaging or um, our hiring companies and our speakers are going to be on the call all day with the chat. And so if you have questions, feel free to drop them in a chat and uh, we would be happy to address them. And we would also love for um, the hiring companies and for Stephanie to go ahead and answer questions as well. So um, as a side note, we will not be sending the PowerPoint out. We do blog this event and we do record it. So you can go back and see it anytime you would like and see this on our website and then see it, um, the blog that comes out in a couple days as well. So keep engaging on the chat. Great job. Good morning, um, Lori. Good morning, Kai, Veronica, Joey. Welcome. So glad to have you all on the call today. And um, make sure you're just connecting with each other through LinkedIn as we go. If you can, we would love to see your beautiful faces on uh, video today. And it feels like it's more engaging that way. So we try to do all we can to try to connect to each other, even though we're not actually at a live event, we're at a live online event. And so connect with each other uh, through the chat, but then also if we can see you on camera, that is even better. All right. Um, I would love to see, one of the other things I'd love to see this morning as in the chat is um, you are here today. Stephanie Claire J is our speaker. We have four companies that are gonna be speaking. What's one thing you were hoping to get out of today? Uh, you can drop that in the chat as well. And we would love to see your comments go through. And if we don't have the, uh, information here or the resources here today, then we will certainly figure out a way to connect with the right people. So uh, drop that in the chat. What are you hoping to get out of today? If you registered online, then in your registration, you got a email that has the link to an assessment we're going to be addressing in the keynote talk. So, and also a handout. So if you did register and you didn't see either of those, go back and look at your email and see if you can pull those. And those are for the event today. All right, I'm gonna have Sheila hop on for just a second. Sheila, do you have any uh, additional tech comments? I think you covered it pretty well. Um, I was just gonna mention also that you do have choices of how your screen is displayed. Uh, for most of the event, we'll be having slides up, but as far as where the videos of people are, you can move those around on your screen. You can move the chat box around on your screen so you can kind of uh, arrange that how you want. You can also control how many of the videos you see. You can just see the speaker or you can see whoever's on video. So play with those icons on top of your video screen. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to do the breakout rooms today. So that will be great at the end of the event. I think that's the exciting part that we can have um, some conversations. So hang on to the end, end of the event and you can speak to all the speakers. And also we have some amazing coaches coming online. Also, I wanted to let you know we have closed captioning available today. If you're in need of that, you can type this uh, URL, which I'll put in the chat when I'm done speaking, and or you can, with your phone, take a key, take a picture of this QR code. Uh, it opens in a separate browser window, so you would have to have both the Zoom and the browser window open to see the closed captioning, but that is an option for you. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Sheila. All right. So let's see. We are gonna get started. So today, um, here's our agenda. We are going to hear from Stephanie Clerge and getting ready for the future of work. And then you're gonna hear from ADP, USAA, Carvana and Wealthwave as our companies today. And then we will close it out at the end uh, with some additional resources, but don't leave because uh, at the end end, at around 10.50 or so, we are going to offer breakout sessions or networking rooms. And what that means is you're gonna be able to go off and to talk to directly to the speakers. All the speakers are gonna have a room today. 
um, the companies, Stephanie, uh, they'll all be available in a room, but also we have these great resources where if you pop in the room, you can meet one-on-one -on -one or in a small group. And we have professional certified resume writers. Uh, we have LinkedIn coaches and career coaches. You can ask questions about interviewing. Uh, you can ask career associated questions like, hey, how do I, um, I'm looking into doing this. What are some things you would recommend? And so hang on at the end and we will have time for you to have those conversations. All right. So I'm um, so excited to have Stephanie here today. And uh, we met quite a few years ago. Yeah, actually, it was funny. Our kids were in the same kindergarten together. And so that's how we met. And um, those kids are now, um, let's see, my daughter is 14 or 13, 14. Yeah, she just had a birthday, 14. So it's been a while, Stephanie. Um, Stephanie Claire J is a consultant, coach, and trainer and holds the title of Vice President of Training and Consulting at Colby Corp a consulting firm specializing in assessments and intervention interventions that increase individual and collective performance. Stephanie holds an industrial engineering degree from Stanford and an MBA from Babson College. She completed a coaching certification from the Hudson Institute of Coaching and previously spent 15 years managing teams and developing leaders at Intel Corporation. So please help me welcome Stephanie Claire J to our event today. Yay! Thank you so much, Jessica. As always, it is a pleasure uh, being here today, being with you here today. Um, it's always excited to be here with Career Connectors uh, and uh, to help job seekers and um, anyone else who's just looking to uh, empower themselves and uh, understand a little bit about the future today. So that's what I'm going to be uh, doing is uh, talking a little bit about the uh, future of work. So as Jessica mentioned, I'm VP of People and Product Development, which um, does not make me a futurist. I'm sorry, I do not have the crystal ball. I cannot tell you the future, but uh, really, we're going to um, get into some of what um, I know, but here's just a little bit of my relevant experience So uh, that allows me to kind of be here before you today. Uh, so as Jessica mentioned, I worked for, um, you know, in the corporate world for almost 15 years, and then I was not only a manager, but I managed the hiring program. So I've done a ton of hiring uh, and when I got my coaching certification, I decided to leave, start my own coaching and consulting practice uh, where I, that's when I really started career coaching with Career Connectors. And then I actually did a tiny little stint as an executive recruiter. So kind of got to see the other side, actually had a LinkedIn account on the other side as I was looking for job seekers. So I learned a little bit about that. And then of course, I'm a trainer and a consultant now. And, uh, but really the thing that makes me most qualified uh, to be here is that I am a zombie killer. Well, actually scratch that. I'm actually not a zombie killer anymore. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, but uh, what I used to do was really work on employee engagement issues. So, you know, the walking, working dead, people who just kind of go through their jobs, kind of going through the motions, but really aren't engaged. And then I worked with those vampires, those energy suckers, those people who are backstabbing and credit stealing and information hoarding, uh, bad bosses, all of those things that keep those of us who just want to do a good job from doing that good job. But as I mentioned, I'm not a zombie killer anymore because as we all know, zombies are the past. The future is robots, uh, but not these cute little guys here. Uh, they're adorable, uh, but they're really not good for much. They're mostly toys. The kind of robots I'm talking about are these guys. And unfortunately, these robots are coming to take our jobs. So uh, in fact, it's already happening. So we've gone from this to this. Uh, where the robots are actually doing some of our work. But it's not all gloom and doom. So I'm here to kind of talk to you a little bit today about this trend and some others. Essentially, I'm here to tell you a little bit, just a little bit about what the future holds, uh, how you can prepare for the future and give you just a few tips on how to start. And I know that's pretty lofty, especially for the amount of time that I have. Uh, so we won't get to everything. There's a whole bunch of stuff I'm not gonna cover today, like the gig economy and what the actual workplace inside, like whether you'll be sitting there or remote work, I'm not gonna cover that kind of stuff. I'm mostly gonna focus on technology and what that has to do with our uh, work. 
But as I mentioned in the beginning, I don't have a crystal ball and the future is inherently unpredictable for uh, anyone who has tried to predict the future often is wrong and some people who are right, I think just get lucky. But what we can do is that we can use history as a guide. The other thing that we can do to kind of shine a light on things is we can analyze current signs and signals because really it's all about going from fear to facts and figuring out what is going to truly be a struggle versus just a stretch. And what I'm hoping to do today, even though I'm gonna start with a little bit more gloom and doom, um, is really to inspire you to, to really think of what the future of work holds for you as more of a stretch that you can lean into instead of something that is going to be uh, a struggle. But I want to start with some expert knowledge here, because as I said, uh, I come from a technology background. Uh, I do a lot of hiring stuff, but I am not a futurist. But interestingly enough, uh, actually back in 2016, uh, Klaus Schwab, um, who is with the World Economic Forum, introduced this concept of the fourth industrial revolution. And if you're not familiar, the fourth industrial revolution really talks about the first three, uh, which was all the first revolution driven by mechanization, like the steam engines and locomotives. Um, the second revolution, which was really driven by electricity and uh, power, um, really giving us the, the next ability to do some of the mass production. The third revolution was really all about automating production and computing power. And now uh, we're in the fourth industrial revolution, which is really all about connecting um, all of that computing power together. So about internet of things and digitization uh, and uh, blockchain, all of the things that you are hearing about right now. And some people say we've already actually entered the fifth industrial revolution, but I haven't found any good research on that and things are moving fast enough already. So let's just say for the sake of argument, we're in the fourth industrial revolution. But either way, uh, what we are experiencing today will affect the very essence of our human experience. Things are moving at a scale uh, and speed that we have never seen before. And so what I wanna do today is I wanna explore the future of industries, jobs and skills and give you a few facts and then uh, end with some tips on what it what you can do as a job seeker and what you can do over the expanse of your career. So let's get started by talking about industries. So here's a recent statistic just from the end of last year, and it said 63% of workers lost their jobs because of COVID-19 have actually changed industries. So as a part of the process of losing their job, they actually changed industries. So what might this mean for you? Well, it might mean that you need to take a look at your industry and figure out what is going on with it. What are some of the trends? Making sure that you're um, doing the reading, doing the research and figuring out what might be going on with your uh, industry. And is it something uh, that you need to consider broadening your job search outside of your industry? Or is it just a matter of getting a few new skills to be ready for when your industry comes back uh, to life if, if you happen to be in the situation? And we'll talk a little bit more about some of those skills and how to get them in just a bit. The next one, this one is about job. And it says 83% of jobs paying less than $20 an hour could have su substantial parts of their work given over to automation. So essentially, this goes back to the robot problem I was talking about earlier, um, or actually, uh, you know, they call them soft robots in some cases, because we're really talking about AI and computing more than we are talking about the big clunky type of robots, although there's some of that out there as well. Interestingly, though, if you think that um, just having a higher level degree is going to save you from that, um, they added in this council of economic advisors added in that advanced degrees won't necessarily protect you uh, because doctors, accountants, and even lawyers face the same risk. And what uh, I, the example I see most prevalently in my life is financial services. So I don't know how many of you remember actually going into the bank. Anybody remember going um, to the bank and filling out deposit slips and doing all of that? Thank you, Virginia. I see you. Um, and so we used to do that. And then we had ATMs and ATMs were great because we could drive up or we could walk up, but there were still tellers inside that we could go and talk to. And some of us still went inside and filled out those little slips. And now what do we do? We carry our ATM with us right here on our phone. Um, and things are getting more convenient. So those types of things are happening uh, to many of the jobs that are out there. And there are now more than 1.2 million industrial machines and robots working across the globe. And that is expected to grow as technology advances. 
And I actually uh, would uh, like for you uh, to meet one of those robots. So you can meet Marty. Uh, so Marty is one of the robots that uh, is in some of the grocery stores uh, that they have been piloting. And uh, Marty does inventory management, hazard detection, cleaning. So has this, if you can think of, you know, those little like, um, or those uh, robots that you might have in your house that clean your carpet or clean your tile so they can spray a little bit of stuff and clean up any spills that happen in the grocery store, stocking and presenting merchandise, um, and also a warehouse and order fulfillment. And why do companies use robots like Marty? Because they make fewer mistakes, they work faster, they can be more precise, they take less breaks, if any at all, maybe just a little maintenance break, and uh, they save money. So uh, this is a little bit of the future um, and what it looks like. Uh, interestingly, um, part of the reason why there hasn't been more widespread use of these types of robots is because of us humans. So when humans interact with these robots, we're still sort of like, eh, I'm not sure. They actually did some surveys of the people in the grocery store and they said, well, even though the robot seemed to be doing a good job, I actually wondered about the humans that the robot might be replacing or um, I just was a little bit suspicious of the robot. I couldn't put my my finger on it, but I didn't like it. So some grocery stores have actually decided not to implement this technology, even though it works, because us as humans, we as humans are not ready for it. So let's talk about though some of the jobs that are more susceptible to automation. Now, do not freak out when you see this slide. This slide is a little bit scary, and I actually hesitated to put this first one on here uh, because uh, you might be able to see by these percentages. So the percentages that you see. Um, at the bottom, this is the percentage of increase or decrease that this job is expected to have in the US by the year 2030, so in less than 10 years. So I really hesitated to put this first one on there with customer interaction, because as you can see, it's, uh, it's expected to decline by just 1%. So that one's really on the bubble. Um, but you can see here some of the jobs, food service workers, sales workers, um, some retail, um, those types of, of jobs. So they're not uh, expected to disappear and they're not even expected to strongly decline. But if you're in those industries, uh, you certainly have to be aware of what is going on, what does the technology look like and what can we do moving forward. And as I mentioned, I'll talk a little bit about that um, in just a bit. Um, but the industries I really want you to pay attention to are office support and predictable physical work. So office support, you can see some of the categories there. Um, but interestingly, it starts off with IT workers. And that's what we've been told for years is the future. And by the way, STEM still is the future. Uh, but uh, it's really that predictable type of work, whether it's physical or whether it's online, that is really looking to um, to be lessened uh, a bit over time. Um, anything that can be replaced by AI. So if you've noticed, you know, calendar, if anyone's seen programs like Calendly, where you can just click on a link and it automatically schedules, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about because we used to have administrative assistants who would send the email or give you a call and go back and forth in order to schedule meetings. Well, now many of us are having the computers do that for us. So um, there's expected over the next um, you know, eight or so years to be pretty large declines in office support. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about a few things we can do um, if you're in that industry. And then the other one is physical predictable uh, work. Uh, so, uh, you know, some of the things that we do from a physical perspective, like dishwashing, um, dishwashers have been around for uh, a lot of years and some, uh, some restaurants and other food production places won't still won't be able to afford to get the kind of mechanism that will do this for a while, um, but all of that kind of stuff is, um, is coming. Um, so this is just a little bit of information. And if you'd like to know more, my source for this is um, McKinsey and Company. They actually have um, a uh, information on jobs lost and gained and what the future will look like. And it's an extensive report and it's free on their website. So uh, please, I encourage you to go and look at that, uh, that study because it's truly fascinating. And I just took a teeny snippet for this presentation. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about um, skills. This is the last part. So we've talked about industries, we've talked about jobs. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about skills. And this research is really interesting as well. And you can see the source here is Deloitte. 
Um, but this is about the 100 year life. So I don't know if any of you have heard um, about the 100 year life, but essentially they're saying, you know, the kids that are, you know, some of us have today, some of the younger kids will actually live to be 100. And if that's so, the career um, span will go from uh, a mere 40 years or maybe 50 years, depending on when you start and when you end, to 60 or 70 years um, length of a career. And the average tenure in job in a job, which used to be about 10.5, uh, 10.8, something like that, is going down to 4.5. And you can see this that some of this research um, is actually a little bit old. So if you look at people's resumes today, we're starting to see two-year spans for tenure and job. But what I really want to point your attention to is the half-life of a learned skill. So skills that used to be um, 20 years, you would go to college, you would learn skills, and those skills would actually be good for a 20-year um, skill span are now just five years. And for those of you who are in technology, I saw scrolling by a few people who are in software and all of that, um, you'll know that you, you're having to learn new software um, in a 12 to 18 month type of time span, that those skills actually become obsolete within just a couple of years. So definitely something to think about in terms of uh, what are we facing in terms of being a continuous learner about being curious and figuring out how we can get those additional skills. So um, I'd like to ask you, is it time to panic? Um, and I would like to uh, tell you, no, it is not actually not time to panic. As I mentioned, when I was talking about the future, it is unpredictable. I've given you a lot of sobering statistics here, um, but one of the things we can do is look to history um, to sort of say, okay, what happened in the first, the second, and the third industrial revolutions? And that should help us as we move to the fifth, fourth and the fifth and beyond. So it is not time to panic, but we can't really dawdle around. Uh, the, uh, but the first thing I wanna say is it's still gonna take a while. Stuff is happening, it's happening quickly, but it's gonna take a while. One of the, um, you know, back almost uh, 10, well, exactly 10 years ago or almost 10 years ago here, um, there was a Wall Street Journal article saying software is eating the world. Uh, and then uh, the very next year, it said Amazon buys an army of robots. So you can see there at the very bottom, it says that was 2012. But what did Amazon do during the pandemic? Hired hundreds of thousands of people. Um, so um, even though these trends are moving, they're maybe not moving as fast as uh, we would have thought. Um, there was also a book in 2012, Robots Will Steal Your Jobs, But That's Okay. Um, and so um, this, is, this kind of stuff has been predicted for quite a while. And although um, this army of robots is sort of marching on, they're marching on a lot slower than we would have thought. So we do have some time if we take the time um, to make a change. Uh, this I thought was fascinating. So this is um, a picture way back from 1967 when the first um, microwave became, uh, uh, you know, was able to be used in the household versus just for commercial use only. And you can see this quote here, the microwave stole my job. And I say, said no woman ever. <laughs> so no one ever said the microwave stole my job, right? We all said, hooray, now we have a new, faster, easier, better um, way to cook. I know um, there's a lot of anti-microwave seg sentiment there, but um, I have young children and so I cannot afford to have anti-microwave sentiment. But um, but the point here is we actually learned to work alongside of this robot, right, this machine. Um, instead of thinking of it as stealing our jobs, we learned to work alongside it. So it's the same thing with our friend Marty that I talked about earlier. Um, Marty in the grocery store, um, we will learn to work alongside robots like Marty um, instead, of, um, instead of thinking them as stealing our jobs. And um, once again, I wanna just remind everybody that I'm not always talking about machines, even though I'm using physical examples because I think it makes it so con concrete. But when I talk about working alongside the robots, I am talking about soft robots as well, which is just um, a euphemism for technology in general. So we should le learn to work alongside the AI. So the chat bots, right? So some of you who might have been in customer service type fields before um, are uh, now there's chat bots, but it doesn't mean we get rid of customer service. Service, what it means is we have customer service solve the more complex problems, the problems that have more nuance, because the chatbots are really only as good as the information that the human can kind of quickly chat and that it can recognize based on what it's learned, but it's the humans that are still solving the more complex problems. 
And then this is the corollary um, to what I showed you earlier. So kind of the opposite of what I showed you earlier. This is that same McKenzie study, uh, but they're talking about here are the jobs that are less susceptible to automation. So um, the first is any job managing and developing people. And I want to take a minute there to kind of talk about that because um, some of you may not have um, experience managing people in a traditional sense, but you may still have leadership skills from other things. So whether it's coaching um, your kids soccer league, and even though someone might argue that that is you were working with kids and not adults, um, uh, I would beg to differ because it's the adults that you really manage when you are coaching um, a ch child's team sport, right? You're not really spending all of your time with their kids, you're spending the time managing the parents, but you might be doing that um, in your um, outside life, um, some of your hobbies and some of the ways that you contribute to the community. So some of that counts when you are looking to move up um, in the management ranks. And volunteering is one of the best ways that you can gain leadership experience that both helps your community and gives you some of that experience if you don't have any. But that's um, one of the, the roles here. The next one is applying expertise to decision making, planning, and creative tasks. So it's really about um, looking at things that you can do that, again, aren't just the routine day by day uh, type of stuff, but the things that require many putting more complex things together, um, planning where there's multiple milestones or multiple factors and being creative in multiple ways. Interfacing uh, with stakeholders, and this one is pretty nuanced because it kind of goes with that other slide that I showed earlier. So um, there is some interface that um, is easy to replace. So again, if it's kind of that um, rote or routine type of thing, that will be easy to replace. But if it's interfacing with stakeholders, especially if you are still physically touching um, the human body, um, that's one that's going to be a little bit harder to replace. I listened to this great podcast this weekend, and they were actually talking about it was a Stanford professor, and she was talking about um, teaching robots to put uh, hospital gowns on patients and how difficult that is because uh, because a human, every human is different. There's soft tissue. You've got to teach the robot and put all sorts of sensors to make sure that the robot doesn't put too much pressure on the humans. And then even more interestingly than that, once humans figure out what robots can do, we actually, and can't do, we actually start helping them. So what they found is some of the subjects that they used in this started helping the robots and that threw the robot off because the robot had learned to deal with someone who was helpless and couldn't put their hospital gown on. But once they started working with people who were actually trying to help them, the robot got confused. So there's so many things that humans are fantastic at um, that robots are going to take um, years and years and years and tons of technology in order to do. And that's a relatively simple task for those of you who've tried to put a coat on a toddler. Um, you figure out how to do that pretty quickly, but it's taking robots literally years and lots of Stanford um, professors and grad students to figure that out. So congratulations if you've done that. And uh, and then um, physical activities that are unpredictable, right? So things that are in unpredictable environments, those are some of the jobs that are less susceptible to automation. So uh, in essence, I want to tell you the machines are learning, right? For those of you who've heard of that phrase, machine learning, the machines are learning, so so should we. We should figure out what it is that we need to do uh, to move uh, forward. And so one of the things I will say is, <clears throat> excuse me, you are not your job is no matter how committed you are to your job, your identity is separate from your work and you can reinvent yourself. We will adapt, right? So um, everyone won't be replaced. We're going to work alongside. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is we still create, maintain, and repair the robots. Um, we are going to be the ones who are going to teach the robots what to do, um, to teach the people how to deal with the robots and how to use them. Um, and we can still do things that robots can't do yet. And so that's really what I'm going to focus on next, because the things that robots don't have that we do have are our personal set of strengths. And we actually have strengths in three parts of the mind. So the robot essentially has one mind. The robot has the mind that we give it. And yes, it can learn over time. But again, what it's learning is just um, the data that we feed it or the experiences that we choose to give it. Um, but we have strengths in all three parts of our mind. And I want to kind of talk about what those are. 
So the good news is um, you know a little bit about two of these of your three parts of the mind. The first one is the thinking part of the mind. So this is the part of the mind that will be on your LinkedIn profile or your resume um, or your bio, but this has to do with your natural intelligence and ability to reason, your skills, your experience, your education, and learned behavior are those things that we typically call habits. So anything that falls into the part of the mind of what we can do or able to do um, based on um, our skills and experience and intelligence and learned behavior, that goes into this thinking or cognitive part of the mind. And so um, here, uh, my mantra for you is learn, practice, evaluate, and repeat. In school, I think we were all taught to learn and practice and then do it all over again. Um, but now we kind of need to add in that evaluate step. And by evaluate, what I mean is figure out um, what are the actual skills for the future before we just go and repeat um, what we've already learned in the past, but figure out what's going on. So if you're in uh, financial services, you should start looking into FinTech and understand what does that word mean? Um, what is the technology that is entering the financial services field? It's the same thing if you're in law, it's the same thing if you're kind of in more business or administration, um, customer service, all of these areas, pretty much every industry that's out there has um, some new skill set that you can uh, figure out how to learn. And there are a ton of resources out there, including free resources. Um, if you go to uh, LinkedIn, they actually have free courses um, that are out there, both on soft skills and on hard skills. And they have a one month free trial. Um, and especially it's a great time if you're a job seeker and you have a month, you can just do as much as you can in that month, um, even if you don't have the ability to uh, pay. Google also has um, a couple of different programs, Google Garage and a whole bunch of different programs, and they have free uh, courses. And interestingly enough with um, HubSpot, I mean, the list really goes on and on. So if you're more into marketing and that kind of thing, one of the reasons these companies are investing is obviously it looks good um, uh, for those of us who are users of their products, but also um, because they are trying to actually make sure that we as a workforce have the skills that they need. Um, because the interesting thing about, um, you know, when you're job seeking that you probably don't realize is um, there are lots of jobs out there. Unfortunately, we don't always have the people who have the skills to take on those jobs. So um, really try to fit that evaluate portion into um, your strengths in the thinking part of the mind, um, better known as your skills and experience. Um, and um, I think I kind of covered a lot of uh, this already, but I just wanted to kind of mention, you know, you hear all of these buzzwords about technology, right? AI and internet of things and digital disruption and all of this kind of stuff. Um, and um, if you are interested in that kind of stuff, fantastic. Um, but what I really want to um, uh, encourage you to do is not spend too much time thinking about the technology buzzwords and figure out what is the technology that is going to be the biggest impact on your personal future. So what are the things that you um, that are, you know, if you have an industry or a couple of industries that you're interested in or a couple of jobs, what is the technology that's actually impacting your job? because blockchain may not be that thing or, you know, cryptocurrency or, you know, 3D printing may not be applicable to what you've got going on, um, but there is a technology skill um, that is relevant to every single um, job out there. So figure out um, what that is. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the feeling part of the mind. So um, this is the uh, part of the mind that tells us about what motivates us, what we prefer, what we want to do, what are some of our desires, um, the values that we hold dear. Um, and this also describes our personality. So whether we're an introvert or an extrovert or what have you. And so many of you have probably taken assessments in this vein before, whether it's Myers-Briggs or StrengthsFinder, um, which is now called Clifton Strengths, um, True Colors, you know, Predictive Index. I mean, the list is literally, you know, super, super long. And fortunately, through Career Connectors, you have the opportunity to take a free DISC assessment. So if you have not done that, I would really recommend that um, you go and uh, find the information on the Career Connectors website, because it's really important that you do understand this part of your mind, that you understand this part of yourself. What is it that you like to do? What is it um, that is the most important part of your personality? Uh, because this is the part of us um, that uh, helps us to stay 
human, right? This is the part of us that so far the robots aren't even close to yet. They cannot empathize with other human beings. So, you know, there's one thing if you have a problem. So think about if you're sitting at home and you have a technology problem, you can go on the website and a chat bot greets you. Um, but, but, and you can type a few things in there, but the one thing that the chat bot um, can't do is actually empathize with your issue. Um, you know, listen to the sound of your voice to how nervous you are. Um, you know, I'm sure they're working on that. I'm sure it's getting there, but um, there are lots of things that humans are still so much better. Um, building trust. I mentioned earlier that one of the reasons why there's not more um, robotic technology proliferation is because people um, still don't trust robots. I think we saw too many of those movies back in the 70s and 80s where the robots were coming to get us. And so people just don't trust them yet. And so until some of that changes, um, you know, you can actually be on the forefront of some of those changes if that's something you're interested in. But essentially, this part of the mind um, is part of the mind um, that is really important. But what I want to actually spend the rest of my few minutes today talking about is the doing part of the mind. Um, this part of the mind that you probably aren't so familiar with, uh, because uh, Colby Corp um, that I work for is the um, only company that we know of who actually has an assessment specifically um, as a part of this doing part of the mind. And what we tell you is your instinctive strengths or your conative strengths, but these are the strengths that are um, a little bit different from that um, thinking or feeling parts of the mind, because those can change over time. You're the thinking part of your mind. Hopefully you're learning new skills. You're educating yourself. So we want that one to change your uh the feeling or personality part of the mind uh that one can change too um uh based on you know where you are in life even things that we think don't change like our values um, or our motivations certainly do change as we age and gain new experiences but this doing part of the mind truly is something that it, we are born with um, much like the robots we are hardwired um, in a certain way in terms of the way we solve problems in terms of the way that we naturally make decisions and the way that we take action. So when we are free to be ourselves and nobody is telling us how we need to do something and we're approaching a problem, we all do that in a specific way. We, we naturally use our mental energy in a very specific way. We use our time in conjunction with that mental energy in a specific um, way. So I would encourage you to leverage the instinctive way you get things done. And I want to spend just a minute telling you more about that. We all have four ways that we naturally take action. The, uh, we all naturally gather and share information in a particular way. Some of us get lots and lots of detail and all of the facts and we research and we justify. Others of us naturally simplify or summarize and our uh, strength is really to make sure that things don't get too complex. Uh, each of us also naturally organizes and sorts and stores uh, and follows uh, certain systems in a particular way. Some of us by actually creating those systems, processes, procedures, plans, anything that adds structure. And others of us naturally find shortcuts. We naturally find more straightforward solutions and we naturally make sure that things don't get overly structured or too bureaucratic. Then uh, we all also have a way of dealing with risk and uncertainty. Some of us naturally innovate. So we improvise, we jump into change. If things are uncertain or risky, we just say, you know what, uh, let's brainstorm, let's figure out some ideas and let's kind of jump right into that. Let's figure out what's urgent um, and what's the challenge and really lean uh, into that and figuring out how can we innovate. And if one thing doesn't work, we just try something else versus others of us naturally stabilize. We naturally say, you know what, let's stick with what's working. Let's make sure that even in times of change, that the things that are working don't get thrown out uh, for the sake of innovation. Um, and our role, especially in an organization, is to um, be the gatekeeper and minimize uh, the risk so that things can keep going smoothly. And then we also all deal with physical space, the tangible physical world around us, physical tangible products uh, uh, and the physical environment. And some of us naturally solve problems by building or creating something physical and tangible and others of us naturally uh, envision or imagine. We can describe something without having to physically show it or build something, even just a prototype. And uh, we naturally deal with things that are more conceptual in nature. So each of us has a natural or an instinctive way of taking action in, four, uh, in these four different modes. 
And the Colby A index uh, gives you information on how you naturally do that by giving you uh, four numbers. And I know some of you had a chance to take uh, the Colby A index and some of you haven't had a chance uh, to do that uh, yet, uh, but that is how you find your doing strengths by taking the Colby A index. And um, as we mentioned before, um, for Career Connectors um, registrants, uh, you have the opportunity to take it for free. Um, Colby Corp actually takes a week out of our schedule every year to work with nonprofits and with individuals and help um, share their strengths. So we're doing that um, again this year. Um, and so you can take this um, at colby.com uh, forward slash career connectors um, and you have until March 19th to do that. So if you didn't get a chance to um, take your Colby A index, um, I encourage you to do that. And if you did take it and you have questions on what does this mean, uh, I encourage you to meet me in the um, breakouts and I'm happy to answer some questions. Um, my colleague, Amy, um, Hagerman is also here with me and um, we're both going to be in the breakout and we can tell you more um, about it if you took it or if you're interested in taking it and have some questions, uh, we would love to tell you about it. But the one thing I will say is taking the Colby A index, other than just understanding your strengths, it under, helps you to understand what you will naturally do, um, both during the job search, which can be critically important, but also obviously once you are actually in a job. So just by looking at these four numbers, um, I can tell you about myself that I naturally deal with um, the unknown um, and complex problems by quantifying it and figuring out what are the opportunities, what are some ways to enhance those opportunities. And I naturally envision or visualize um, the way that things can get done. And I'm gonna look for an existing sort of system um, to put things in, but not anything that's too cumbersome. And more importantly, it tells me what to avoid. So if I have a job where I don't get to dig into the details or I don't really get to know my client, that's gonna be a disaster for me. Or if I have a job where I have to do the same thing over and over and over in a very specific way um, and follow the plan and follow it in a sequence and focus um, on one thing at a time, I will also um, not, I will be stressed out if I do it because, you know, we're motivated to do stuff that we don't um, naturally do. Um, so I can do it for a while, but I will be stressed out. I will burn out and eventually my results will suffer. So understanding your strengths really helps you to uh, avoid um, 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 missteps in your job. So the handout that I'm giving you, I'm not going to go through all of this, but this is all about a uh, job search in three parts of the mind. And I kind of um, tweak this one a little bit for the job search of uh, the future. So in each of those areas I talked about before, thinking, feeling, and doing, um, you know, asking yourself these questions can be really helpful. So what knowledge do I need to attain or what skills do I need to attain for the future? Uh, what features of my personality are helpful in this job? And how can I uh, communicate my instinctive strengths to the interviewer? So those are just a sample of some of those questions. And um, that handout was sent to you as a part of your Career Connectors registration. Um, the second part of that handout is a checklist. So once you have your Colby A index, it just kind of tells you some things that you can do. And uh, you will see on that checklist, there is a, another link, um, activateyourcolby.com slash activate your A. And there's a webinar that actually goes through what the Colby A index is. So if you can't stay for the breakouts or you just want someone to go through it with you, there's an on-demand webinar. And we're actually going to have a live webinar um, coming up here in the end of March. So in conclusion, I just want to ask you, are you ready uh, for the future? Uh, hopefully the checklist that I gave you and understanding your strengths will help you to answer that question. Uh, but just remember uh, that you are um, who you are. We are humans and uh, we are ready for these robots. We just have to uh, do the same thing they're doing, which is learn a little bit about the future of work. So. Uh, that concludes this presentation, but what I love doing when I come to Career Connectors is not just speaking, but being able to say, we're hiring. Um, so you can also come see us uh, in the breakout as well. We're actually hiring um, for customer service and help desk support. Um, we're hiring some uh, sales folks and um, a programmer. So um, we've got jobs. So come visit us um, in the breakout or go to colby.com slash careers and uh, you can learn more um, and apply there as well. So. 
uh, that is exciting. And if you have discovered your strengths uh, through this uh, time or any time in the future, um, we do encourage you to post on social media um, what you've learned about yourself and your strengths and use our hashtag Colby Strengths Week. And if you think you took it in the past already, you actually don't need to retake. So you can go to colby.com slash find my A. And um, if you think you've taken it before and you can find your previous result because your first result is actually your most accurate. So that's all that I have uh, to um, talk to you about today. And if you have any questions, I really look forward uh, to meeting you um, in the breakouts. Thank you. Hey, Stephanie, thank you so much. Um, we have about 10, 15 minutes or so still of time for you if we need it. So would you mind jumping back to the handout and going a little bit into detail on um, how they people can utilize this this uh, thinking, doing, feeling handout. Would you mind spending a few minutes on that? Sure, I would love to. I think it's slide 42. There we go. Yep. There we go. So um, this handout is really uh, just kind of talking about some of the things that we expressed in terms of the uh, three parts of the mind in the um, that I alluded to earlier. So that first part of the mind is really about your skills and experience. So you want to kind of ask yourself some of these questions. So what skills do I have that are difficult to automate or are related to technology? So that's really two separate questions, but I didn't have a lot of room on the slide um, to put them. So the first one is what are the skills that I have that are difficult to automate? And what you want to think about here is you actually want to think through what are uh, what are some of the um, skills that you do that are maybe very routine? So if you are, uh, for example, scheduling travel for someone, um, we know that there are easy apps and web pages that help you um, do that. And all of those activities are um, relatively uh, routine. If you're working in um, customer service or if you're working in retail, the things that you do that are pretty routine and aren't too complex, those are the things that you need to look at. And then I would just, you know, really focus on doing some Google, just using good old Google or whoever your browser of choice is and um, looking at, you know, just searching for things like technology in and then put your industry. So technology in customer service or technology in, um, you know, even software development, because there's even um, some of those fields that we consider to be technical actually have um, some uh, technologies that are actually coming in uh, to help um, automate some of those things and understanding what are those, how do those work? Uh, because one of the jobs of the future is actually being sort of that liaison between the human and the technology, making sure that the technology is working properly, making sure that the data that is given to the automation is clean. Um, there's so many jobs out there that we don't even um, understand yet. Um, and so um, both understanding how to work alongside the technology, um, but also how to drive the technology is super important. Um, and then you can see some of the other questions there under the thinking part of the mind. So what knowledge do I need to obtain? And then what experiences do I need to have? And again, I just cannot emphasize enough volunteering um, during the, you know, there was there was a short time in my career, even though I've got that uh, great looking resume where I didn't have a job or I was working for myself and I didn't have as many clients as I wanted. And what was the first thing I went out and did? I volunteered because you A, find such a great group of people um, that you can work with and network with um, and become friends with. The next thing is you can volunteer to do stuff that's maybe a little bit outside of your wheelhouse and people will be happy to train you and then hand stuff over to you because people who um, run nonprofits are really busy helping others. And so they're um, happy to kind of do that. So whether it's you know political volunteering or volunteering with your church or some other type of charitable organization, um, that is my number one tip that I give to people in terms of how do I get new skills? Because it's not just about sitting and taking classes, although I encourage that. That. Um, you can also just Google, you know, courses with certificates and get a certificate that goes with it. That can sometimes go a long way, but there's only so much you can get from the, the, the you know, certificates and book learning. You actually have to put it into practice. And sometimes um, nonprofits are a great way to do that, especially since a few of us um, may not be able to get internships because those internships always say, you know, new college grads and students. It's kind of a sneaky way to get um, an internship. 
Um, so the not feeling part of the mind, you got to start with what do you enjoy doing? So like I said, there's that big list of technology stuff, but if you're not interested in it, like I'm not interested in fintech, financial services. I'm interested in the business world and what drives the business world, but I'm not interested in specifically in blockchain and cryptocurrency and all that. So if I spent my time learning that, it wouldn't register with me um, because I, I truly believe that you have to... Um, really enjoy what you're doing and be passionate about it in order for it to be something that sticks. Um, you also want to understand your personality that goes back to um, DISC and some of those other assessments. And then also the um, uh, what aspects of company culture. So we didn't talk too much about that, but the future of work is actually about um, the, the work the worker and the workplace. And we all know that the workplace is changing. We all just you know, saw this huge shift in the workplace just with remote work. And now everybody is um, had to just get a little bit more technology uh, acumen or understanding than what we used to have to do. So understanding what environment works really well for you, both culture-wise um, and in terms of um, that can be helpful. So knowing whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, those types of things can be really helpful, um, especially um, in deciding what industries and jobs might be good for you. And then that doing part of the mind, um, really this is about um, understanding your conative instincts or your instinctive strengths by taking the Colby A index. And then once you have those strengths, you really want to figure out how is it that I can communicate this to others, whether they're coworkers or whether they are uh, folks that are in, um, uh, the interview process and really being able to describe not just what skills you have, but actually how you use those skills. That's really the difference um, between the skills and the cognitive um, is, uh, you know, not just what you can do, but how you naturally do it and how you'll be most productive at work. Are there other questions? Um, that was great. Uh, I don't, I don't see any other ones yet. Um, but I'm sure people uh, will be going into their uh, assessment and taking that soon and may have some questions. But I thought this was also really interesting. Ste um, Stephanie mentioned that they offer this every year. And I just want to show this, show this, let's see. This was my post one year ago today about Stephanie coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that, Jessica. This was one of the last things I did before going into almost complete quarantine. So I, um, I have somebody at home who is at high risk. And so I have been like in my house. Career Connectors one of one of the last things I did oh. um, outside my house uh, last year. So it's always yeah. great to be uh, it's always great to be back here. And I know this is like a fire hose of information. So I really do encourage you when we um, when the blog gets written, I'll make sure that some of the um, the uh, sources are in there because it really is helpful to kind of dig a little deeper into some of those sources that I cited with McKinsey and Deloitte and some of those um, because they're really the experts. I just really um, enjoy, um, you know, giving people some food for uh, some food for thought. Um, and then the live webinar in March is available to you. So if you go to uh, colby.com uh, forward slash activate your A, uh, then you can go. It's a free webinar. It's open to the public. So share it with your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your family. It's open to the public. And essentially, it just explains that. But there's also an on-demand webinar that's already there. So if you don't want to wait, I think it's, it's either March 24th or 25th. Amy, maybe you can put that in the chat. Um, but it's one of those days, but if you don't wanna wait, there's an on-demand uh, webinar uh, there, so. Awesome, um, thank you. And so we have, from the last time Stephanie also spoke here a year ago, we have a blog um, the review on our website. So you are welcome to go out there and look a year ago and you can see her content from that talk as well. So Absolutely. Stephanie, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We, uh, everyone's dropping in uh, messages of thank you for providing this assessment. We really appreciate that Colby does this every year. And uh, thanks so much for being here today. Perfect. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Stephanie, again, will also be um, in the breakout room. So if you have more questions for her, if you have um, questions about your assessment, you can drop into her breakout room in a little bit when we get to that point. Okay, so I'm excited to bring Pam Farling to the stage next. Um, Pam, has been, Pam has been in the Valley for five years now and was originally from a small town in Ohio. 
She's been married to her husband for just over three years. They have three dogs. She has been with ADP for 11 years, supporting hiring in several locations and most recently in their newest office in Tempe. Uh, she has done recruiting for all levels of positions from entry level to senior leadership. And she enjoys baking, watching movies and sitting outside under the stars on a cool night. Me too. One of her favorite places she's been to is Sedona. And since they love to travel, Pam and her husband are hoping to purchase an RV this year so they can take the dogs on the road with them. Please help me welcome Pam Farley. Yay. I think you're on mute, Pam. Let's see, I'm gonna ask you to unmute and see if you get that. Can you hear me now? There we go, yep. My mute button disappeared when I got control of the screen, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment. Thank you, Jessica. Um, hello, everyone, welcome. Uh, so our office in ADP, our ADP office in Tempe, um, actually we did the first phase of opening in October we only have like 10 percent of our staff that actually go in on a volunteer basis for, so for the most part the rest of us are still at home um we don't have a crystal ball as to when the rest of the office will be open but um just a little bit about adp um for we've been around about 70 years um we've led the way in defining the future of business solutions uh, ADP is proud to be named fortune magazine's world's most admired companies for 12 years uh, we are, well, a lot of people know we're, we're known for payroll. We're actually a human capital management um, company. So we think of us as doing everything from re, um, hire to retire uh, for our clients. Oh, sorry, I'm a little fast. So um, here are just some of the uh, awards that we've received. Um, you know, we're in some of the top companies on LinkedIn. Um, some best companies for multicultural women, uh, working mother, comparably just named as best company culture. Um, and there's a few others there as well. And so some of the things um, that we do offer, we offer, you know, a good work-life balance, uh, teamwork, of course, was a little easier when we were in the office, but um, we've been doing uh, virtually with uh, WebEx teams and um, doing video group chats and things like that to kind of stay connected. Um, we do have some diversity organizations and business resource groups as well. And then we have a huge career growth and development uh, within the company. And matter of fact, our office in Tempe has a senior director that leads that. Um, so she's definitely um, available. And then uh, we have some recognition awards and strong brand. And then some of the other benefits, of course, you know, we have the um, your uh, benefits, your 401k, stock opportunities. Uh, we do have a leave policy for new parents. And then an HSA match, tuition reimbursement, and pay for knowledge bonus as well. So one of the good things is, is we are hiring and we are hiring a lot. So we are super busy, which is good, but this is just a handful of some of the positions we have open. The link at the bottom is going to be the specific positions in Arizona. Um, but we have everything, the associate client support consultants, the implementation specialists, and um, your payroll specialists. Those are gonna be more of your hourly associates while all the others are gonna be more salaried and tenured. Uh, we do have a couple manager positions open right now for different teams. And um, if you have any questions, I will be around later um, in one of the chats if you wanna um, ask me any questions. And then here is my contact information. Thanks, Pam. I know that you guys are doing a lot of remote work right now. Do you have any positions that will stay remote? Do you know, or will everybody be going back to the office? We do have a handful. Um, when you look at the job online, it will indicate if it's remote or virtual. Um, but for the most part, a lot of them will be going back to the office. Okay, and that office is in Tempe primarily, right? Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Pam. Again, she will be available at the end to chat, and uh, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you. All right, so Jeff is next, and Jeff currently supports USAA's Phoenix Regional Operations HR team. 
He, his responsibilities include HR programming and initiatives for the Phoenix campus and local Phoenix community. He's been with USAA for 13 years and has held different positions, um, working with fitness, wellness, recruiting, and operations. He's certified as a senior professional in HR and has a master's degree from the University at Buffalo in exercise physiology. He was born in Niagara Falls, New York, and has lived in Arizona since 2000. He loves playing golf, hockey, music, and especially traveling with his wife, Isa, as much as possible. So please help me welcome Jeff to our stage. Yay. Well, hello, thank you. And thanks for the introduction. I am just waiting to get control of the screen. I think if you, if, if you click on the bottom left of your screen, it'll pop up. Oh, there it is. Awesome. Well, let me go back. Just a few technical snags, always part of the Zoom experience. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for the intro, Jessica. And, and I'm really excited to be back here with Career Connectors. And we've done events over the years with, with this group. And I just really appreciate what you all do for the community. And I think it's a really great service and, and just amazing resources for job seekers. So I'm just super excited to be here to talk to you about USAA. And so what is USAA? So we were founded in 1922. So we are almost going to be 100 years coming up. So we're at 90, our 99th year. And we were founded by a group of army officers in San Antonio that wanted to offer these type of services to their army officers. And you know, you can see in my background, that is a picture of our Phoenix lobby, but you know, our company was set up on the values of service, loyalty, honesty, and integrity. And those are still values that we follow today. And so we always start all of our meetings at USA with our mission and our USA standard. And we do what's called a mission moment. So really that's just a time for somebody to tell a story that somehow impacted them and is related to our mission related to, to what we do. And when you look at what USA is, we provide financial services for the United States military and their families. So we really strive to become the provider of choice for the military community. And so everything we do within USAA is focused towards that mission. And we also have what's called the USA standard. And again, every meeting we start with some stories about this just to keep ourselves grounded in what we do. And so, you know, you can read through all these. We definitely want to keep our membership and mission first. I talked about service, loyalty, honesty, integrity. Um, and just two that I really want to point out. So one, embrace diversity and be purposely inclusive. You know, so, so we at USAA look at all perspectives and we are purposely inclusive with our employees. And so, and I'll talk a little bit about some of our diversity groups and some of the efforts we have a little bit later, but that's built right into the culture of our company. And the other one, and I feel like this fits right into what Stephanie talked about was innovate and build for the future. We are definitely trying to make USA be around for another hundred years. And so, you know, we are doing things to innovate and build for the future. And when I talk a little bit about the type of jobs we have, you'll see that we're adding some of these technology jobs and you know, different support positions towards that goal. Okay, so what is it that is so special about USAA? And I would basically say it's, it's our employees, it's their membership and our financial strength. And so we have over 36,000 employees all over the world. And we at this point we have over 13 million members. I mean, you think about a company that started out in one little office in San Antonio to grow to 13 million members is amazing. And our net worth is over 35 billion now. And that's continuously grown as, as a company and shows really our financial strength and commitment to the military. Got the good transitions going there. So, 
these are some of our campuses. And so we have campuses all over the country. And you can see that these are just some pictures of our campuses and how many employees we have in each location. And I, I will say we also have about 6,000 uh, employees that are working remote full time in previous life. That's probably the best way to put it. And so um, you can look at the different campuses and locations, Phoenix, Colorado Springs, Chesapeake, San Antonio is our headquarters. Tampa has two campuses, Dallas. And so last year when the pandemic hit, we moved over 30,000 employees home in 10 days. And so I, I will never forget because I was actually getting ready to go to a junior achievement event in the community. And we got the call from our company of, hey, if you, you can work at home, then stay home and, and you know work from home for the unforeseeable future. And those employees that were in office, we sent them home, got them up and running, got, you know, got their workstation set up, got their technology, all that set up in 10 days. So, you know, a pretty amazing accomplishment when you consider the amount of campuses and roles and positions and people that we have. And it really showed that the main focus of our company has always been the safety of our employees. And so, and even now, so we still have 94% of our workforce that's working remotely. And we don't have a time when we're going to come back. It's still undetermined up in the air. You know, hopefully someday we'll be able to come back to our campuses, but for the time being, almost all of our workforce is working remotely at home now. All right, so, and I should point out if you guys have questions in, in the chat, I have one of our recruiters, Josiah, I don't know if he introduced himself or not, but he's in there and he can answer some of your questions and we'll both be available in, in the breakout rooms after. And so, but so what makes USA different? You know, what's, what's, what's so different about USA versus other companies? And, you know, really, I, I, I think what makes us different is our culture, our commitment to our mission and some of our benefits and amenities. And so these are just some pictures of our Phoenix campus. And, and I know Jessica and Sheila, they've both been on our campus and they've just seen um, just what a beautiful building it is. And all of our campuses are beautiful in their own ways, but I'm kind of impartial to Phoenix just being here. But, um, you know, these are just some pictures. You know, we have uh, Starbucks on campus, one of my favorite places. We have a free fitness center for employees. We have some relax, um, just kind of zones where you can chill out. This one's an actual living plant wall. So it's, it's a room you can just relax. And we also have another wall that's just a wall of water and you can just take 10 minutes if you need to just take a break and relax. And, you know, some of the other amenities, on-site child development center, on-site fitness recreational. We actually have an on-site health clinic. So if you want to see a nurse practitioner, if you want to do a blood draw, you want to do a physical, you can do that on campus. And it really saves you a lot of time, you know, when Think about the time it takes for an employee to go, drive to a doctor's office, wait in line, get seen, come back. That's really been very helpful for our employees. Uh, On-site cafeteria, and just a few benefits I'd really like to, to point out, but so our 401k match, so we match up to 4, to 4%, but we match 200% of what you put in. So for every dollar you put in, we give you $2. So it's basically a two for one match up to 4%. And then, you know, we have 34 paydays off in your first year from paid holidays to PTO. And we actually give our employees two volunteer days to go out into the community and volunteer to an organization of their choice. Okay, so this lists our, a lot of our other benefits and before your eyes pop out, um, you know, th this is all available on our USA job site and our website, so you can see some of this stuff, but just two that I really want to talk about that I think are fantastic benefits. So one, our paid parental leave. We give our employees up to 12 weeks of paid parental leave for mother and father. So it's just a great time to bond with a new child. Um, and we also offer you know, that for mother and father. So um, another one that's very dear to my heart is our education assistance plan. And we have a company called Edisys that manages this and Basically, we give you up to $10,000 a year to spend on any degree you want. It does not have to be related to your job. So if you want to go get a degree in whatever it is, in could be 
automation or technology, kind of like Stephanie talked about. But um, so in the, you're eligible for this day one. And we basically give you a company credit card to use towards this. And it's not something you, you would owe back if you ever left the company. So it's just use this towards your degree. We believe in education of our employees and in development. So I think that's just a fantastic benefit. Um, and then you can read through all the other ones. Again, a lot of this is on, on our USA job site too. So, okay, so I mentioned diversity and inclusion, and this is something that is completely embedded in USA's culture. And so these are just some pictures of what we call our diversity business groups. Many other companies may call them ERGs, but we call them DBGs. That's just kind of our USA name for it. But you, you can see some of these groups and their names and, and you know, what demographic they represent. But I will say that, you know, many of our employees sign up for some or all, you know, and, and they just sign up as allies. And over 50% of our employees are in at least one of these business groups. And so they do all kinds of things, informational events, internal, external, and, you know, just different things. And it's also a great development leadership opportunity. So each of these teams have core teams. So they'll have a lead, they'll have a treasurer, they'll have a communication director. So it's a great opportunity for employees to get some leadership experience, you know, working with these groups, you know, in a volunteer capacity and also VetNet. So, uh, so I, you know, we talked about USA being uh, for the military and their families. And so about 20% or a little bit over 20% of our employees are veterans and or military spouses. So that means that you know, the other 80% are not. I'm not personally a veteran. I'm not a veteran or a spouse. I've never served. I don't have family in the military. But I feel like through VetNet, um, I've been able to learn a lot about the culture, a lot about the groups. And it's also a great resource for, for new vets that come in as employees. And, you know, sometimes that transition is not as smooth as it could be. And so this group really helps to give them someone to talk to and someone to uh, just have that resource to help them out. So... Okay, so what types of positions do we have at USAA? And, and these are just examples in Phoenix. And one thing that's unique about Phoenix is that we have all lines of business on our campus. And so we're really, besides for our headquarters, the only regional office that has all these lines of business. And so really the bread and butter of USAA is our, our property and casualty group and our federal savings bank. So the majority of our roles are between these two companies. And you can see kind of some of the examples. And so, you know, there's claims positions, underwriting, insurance, uh, new member acquisition, you know, for example, you know, kind of the entry level would be an entry level sales insurance professional, but there's all kinds of roles up through the professional levels and also support roles that support these type of groups. And also our bank. So we are, you know, have a federal savings bank and, you know, roles in deposit, credit card, consumer lending, real estate, mortgage, loan officers, we have some of those roles. Um, you know, again, this is an example of an entry level, but there's all kinds of support roles and, you know, business advisors and, and project roles that support these groups too. Uh, and then some other other, you know, information we talked about IT. We are definitely, especially in Phoenix, hiring technology jobs. We're you know, really looking for software developers, but there's also other positions related to that that are open, uh, risk management, audit compliance. And we also have interns. So every summer we bring on interns to our campus and all over the country and they get a chance to uh, work at USTA for a few months. Okay, so how do you find out about jobs at USAA? So really everything's on our website, usaajobs.com. And so, you know, you can look at this website and, you know, this is actually taken right from the website, but there's information about USAA. You can learn about our campuses. I had mentioned the bank and PNC and some of the other career areas, technology. You can click on that and it really gives you a kind of a deep dive into those positions. You, know, you can learn about locations, you know, the military, the, the interns, you just life at USAA. So I'd really encourage you to go to our website and just, you know, look at our jobs. We have a lot of jobs posted all over the country. In fact, I just took a look this morning and Phoenix had 88 jobs posted for Phoenix, just Phoenix. So, you know, and they're all everything from entry level up to, you know, director, you know, executive level. And so you can look through that. So I'll give you um, a couple quick tips just for our job site. And so one is 
when you go into the site, you can sort what you search. And so you can search by city. So if you're really interested in Phoenix rolls or other cities, you can click on that and you know look at the jobs that are tied to that. And then also we have a lot of jobs that are available for remote. And so, you know, some are remote for now, but they'll come back to the office, but some are just full-time remote. And it will say that on the posting, it'll say remote available or remote. And basically those jobs are available anywhere. So you can just search for remote in, in the uh, search box and it'll pull up the, the remote jobs too. And so, you know, that's where I encourage you because there may be positions out of San Antonio that are also offered remote or of Colorado, they're offered remote. So don't, don't forget that when you're searching for our positions. Um, the other is to set up a profile. So you can go in there and if you're, say you're interested in IT jobs or project, you can have it set up keyword alerts. So when they're posted, you can see that it's posted and apply right away. So that's always a good tip to just be in, in the, the know of when those jobs are posted. Um, and then the other thing I just, and I think this kind of goes a little bit towards some of the stuff that Stephanie talked about, about not having that round peg in a square hole. Be strategic about what you're looking at. You know, our jobs will post what the job does. It posts the minimum requirements. And so one, you have to completely meet the minimum requirements to be considered for a job. Um, and then there's also preferred requirements. That's just a little more tailored to this specific position. But, you know, just really think through how your resume shows that. and and really, you know, be strategic. You don't want to just apply to 50 jobs. You want to just think about what jobs you may be a good fit for, what makes sense, and kind of hone that in. And sometimes it does take applying for multiple jobs to, to have the timing work out. And so I just encourage you to keep trying. Um, yeah, so that, that's really all I have. And thank you so much for giving me the option to, uh, to speak today and telling you a little bit about USAA. And we'll be available in the breakout room and be happy to answer any questions at that point. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. We appreciate you being here today. Yep. All and right. here you can get, forgot to put this. Yeah, again, connect with me on LinkedIn. You know, you can just search for my name, USAA, and it'll pop up and I'll be happy to talk more there too. Great. You know what? That's a really good tip. If you can't find somebody by their name, put in their last company or the state or something. Um, and a lot of times that will help uh, pop, pop up a person that you're looking for. So thanks. Yep. All right. We're going to move over now to Carvana. So Dara Lassiter is a senior manager of talent at Carvana, where she leads the talent acquisition and talent development for the customer care division. Her team's mission is to hire great people and create hashtag job love. A seasoned HR leader, she brings a well-rounded expertise in the area of leadership, talent acquisition, employee engagement, people strategy, and also fostering high performance cultures. Founded in 2012, Carvana is the fastest growing auto retailer in the US, disrupting everything you know about the traditional dealership experience. So please help me welcome Dara Lester. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Jessica. When you say it like that, it just sounds like, you know, so uplifting and inspiring. <laughs> we, we, get, we get so busy in our grind every day, we forget like, wow, we, we are doing some amazing things. So uh, yeah, wonderful to meet all of you and such a pleasure to be here for my first Career Connectors event. Um, yeah, I'm with Carvana. We are a eight-year-old company. We've got about 10,000 employees nationwide. And we are disrupting the auto industry. We are doing something that nobody's ever done before. And it's been super, super exciting. Our mission is to change the way people buy cars. Plain and simple. The traditional dealership experience is not really fun for most people. There are a couple of people that enjoy it. But for the most part, we don't like getting held hostage for five or six hours. We don't like being painted into a corner. We don't really like the whole experience. And, and that was how Carvana was born. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. And so we've done a couple of things. We've leveraged technology. Um, I love the things that Stephanie talked about in terms of AI and engagement analytics and robots that we are on the forefront of all of that. And it's super, super exciting. And then our other uh, piece, our other secret weapon is our people, the people we hire. We hire, as our CEO said on the earnings call the other day, we hire people that care just a little bit more than anybody else. Um, so that ambition, that innovation, and that execution is what really sets us apart. 
ton. But I'm going to let a video, a 30 second quick video, do some talking to give you a little bit more insight into what Carvana does. When we started Carvana, they told us that selling cars 100% online wouldn't work. But we went to work. Building an experience that lets you shop over 17,000 cars from home. Creating a coast-to-coast -coast network to deliver your car as soon as tomorrow. Recruiting an army of customer advocates to make your experience incredible. And putting you in control of the whole thing with powerful technology. That's why we've become the nation's fastest growing retailer. Because our customers love it. See for yourself at Carvana.com. All right, so a couple of our values, um, be brave and zag forward. Um, I loved what Jeff said about mission moments. That's so exciting, so inspiring. Uh, we are also a company that really lives and breathes by our values um, and uh, allowing us to be very brave and just dive right in and make mistakes and also continually zagging forward um, are, are just a couple of values that we lean into to do some amazing things like uh, that are listed on this slide. Founded in 2012, we've now been ranked as America's most valuable corporation. Um, our stock price has really increased over the last year and it's been super exciting to watch. We're 100% online, 100% online. You can buy a car, shop, you shop for a car, buy a car, get finance for a car, arrange for delivery on your car, all from your cell phone, all from your cell phone. It's all electronic, no commission salespeople, no dealerships. We sold 200,000 cars online in 2020. We're now planning to more than double that this year. And we've got a lot of great features and benefits to purchasing from Carvana, all in an effort to give you peace of mind. I know it can be really um, scary to buy a car, such a big invest investment online. So we've done a couple of things to really make, make it safe and comfortable for the public. And then we also will buy your car. This is something that a lot of people don't know. We have a division called Sell to Carvana, about 300 people in that division. And that's our, that's, that's our startup within our startup. And we will purchase your car, make it super easy for you, come and pick it up right from your driveway and hand you a check. So lots of exciting things happening here in our organization. Um, this slide highlights some of our benefits, perks, and our communities. Um, a couple of ones that I'll draw your attention to is our paid parental leave. We also offer that for both maternal and paternal leave. Um, we also have an amazing program with Arizona State University where we will cover your tuition if you're looking to achieve your bachelor's degree online. So it has to be with ASU, has to be online, but we will pay up to $5,000 for you to continue your, your, your march towards your bachelor's degree. And that's a brand new benefit we just implemented a couple of months ago. We have an amazing Carvana Fit Wellness program. It includes physical fitness as well as mental health and well being. We're super, super proud of that. And then finally, I, it seems like everybody's favorite benefit is your birthday is an official holiday. So you get to take your birthday off or at any point in time within your birthday month, a free day paid off. Um, one other thing on our medical premiums, Carvana is committed to paying for employee only premiums 100%. So your employee only medical insurance is 100% paid by the company. If you join Carvana and you're an employee only person, your medical is going to be covered absolutely for free. Um, and then our Carvana communities. We are super, super proud to, to, to have these in place. And we've got a good 200 to 300 people in each and every employee resource group. Um, last month, we celebrated Black History Month with all sorts of fun educational events. This year, we're having a great time celebrating Women's History Month. So not only are you, you know, able to be an you know, part of an amazing company, you're also able to kind of learn and reflect and digest and learn a little bit more about uh, um, people, else, you know, people that are different than you. Um, we, we actually have about 900 positions posted right now. I just checked this morning. We have 900 positions posted on Carvana.com. Um, this is just a small slice of some openings that my team is responsible for. Um, there's about 100 recruiters in Carvana. Um, so leadership roles with the customer care. Our customer care contact center is located here locally in the Phoenix area. Of course, we're all working from home right now. We will be returning to our corporate offices in the near future. But I've got a, quite a few leadership roles, a, a team lead role in my customer care division. I've got a team lead role in registration. This is a, a coaching development type management role where you're leading a team of 15 to 17 people, um, advising them, consulting them, helping them reach, reach their highest potential. I've also got a manager role that leads a customer care org of anywhere from 80 to 100 people. 
Um, also have a senior manager role and an associate director role. So there really is no end to the opportunities we have here. Um, a couple support roles, if you're, uh, if you're a very detailed oriented person, I have a couple quality control and quality assurance specialist opportunities with our company. And then we have quite a few people operations openings. I'm hiring a junior recruiter right now. We've got a talent development coordinator position posted, and we've got three HRIS specialists um, openings right now with Workday. Um, that is one of the careers that is of the future. If you, you know, if you know anything about HRIS systems, we need really good people that, that can get in there and, and extract the data and, and, and run all sorts of interesting insights for us from our people systems. Again, 900 openings posted, go take a look, um, carvana.com forward slash careers. And I wanna say there's about 163 openings in Phoenix, 163 openings in Phoenix. So Val, the 900 openings are actually throughout the country. We operate throughout the country. We have 74% of the market share of the United States right now. So just use the location tab. You can see where we might have openings in other places like Chicago and Memphis and Alabama and Tampa, Florida, all over the place, but about 163 openings were, were posted for the Phoenix area. Awesome, wow. Yeah. Great information, Dara. It's funny, we are buying a new car and I have been all over Carvana and I am so impressed. It's like, you're a technology company and oh yeah, we have cars. <laughs> it's like, is there just, you guys are sending me the right stuff within the parameters. I don't have to talk to anybody. It's been awesome. <laughs> Great to hear. Thank yes, you. Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here today. All right. We are going to uh, move over to Jason, our last company today. And um, through this pandemic, one of the things we have been asked about was different types of opportunities, different types of jobs. And one is, you know, business, business ownership. So Jason and I actually did a really cool interview yesterday and it's posted on our website that you can take a look at. But all about if you are interested in business ownership, what, how you can get started, what are some tips, what, how do you network, um, how do you identify what you might be good at. So Jason, that was a great interview. Thanks for doing that. Um, so he's here today to talk about um, another opportunity that can either start as a, a part-time or full-time position. And um, this is, a lot of people are interested in um, some type of side hustle, nothing like an MLM, but, um, but it's not, not traditional. So I encourage you to take a listen. Um, to what Jason has to say here today. And um, he is, um, he has spent two decades in the corporate world in the semiconductor industry. And then his business experience has ranged from owning his own consulting firm to purchasing a franchise that he and his wife ran. Then the past 15 years, he has been spent, spent managing his own agency. He's been recognized for his performance in the top 500, been featured on the cover of Business and Finance Magazine and is a multiple six figure earner. Jason co-authored a best-selling book called Winning Ways, which by the way is a great book. Um, he's been married for 29 years. We have two children and he is, uh, the title is Senior Marketing Director with Wealth Waves. So please help me welcome Jason White. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, let's see, got it. All right, awesome. Well, hey, I uh, appreciate the time with everybody today and I think all the presenters have been uh, incredible. Stephanie, your, um, your session was, was outstanding. Um, really, really good stuff there. Um, and, and as has everybody else's. So uh, I love what uh, what Dara said about being a disruptor. That is exactly what uh, we are about in the financial services industry. Um, we bill ourselves as the how money works company. Um, you know, most people don't get any type of money education um, out of formal schooling. And uh, so therefore we, we take a job, we, we get educated, and uh, then we try to figure out what to do with our finances and money. And uh, quick story about how I landed here uh, doing this as a career. It was not on my radar, by the way. I, uh, I didn't think in the beginning I had any type of transferable skill, um, but I came here as a client uh, through my CPA. And uh, it was a little bit frustrating that uh, all those years in the corporate world that we just didn't have anybody that ever had reached out to us and said, hey, you know, what are you doing for retirement planning? It, by the way, including my own CPA who did my taxes and could see all of our financial matters. It wasn't until I proactively sought out some help that, uh, that something happened. And so when we finished our plan, I looked at the gentleman that helped us with this and I said, what, is it, what does it take to do what you do? 
um, because we were making uh, some serious money mistakes, not not intentionally, just out of uh, out of ignorance because we didn't know any better. And uh, and through some of that effort, uh, it really turned our financial life around. And I figured if it was good for my family at that age and stage of life, then it was probably good for families just like mine. And I just made a an uneducated assumption that happened to be accurate that most people were not getting that type of support. Um, and so, you know, over the f a few years, we've we've refined our model and and refined our marketing and uh, created the How Money Works program. And at the end of the day, our vision is is to help people get on their feet uh, from a financial perspective. You know, pandemic. I think there's the last numbers I saw. There's still like 15 million Americans unemployed. This has been in my lifetime. I'm 51 years old. I've been through probably four what would be considered recessions and pullbacks that had deep impact. This one was by far the worst uh, in terms of how deep it impacted uh, people's individual lives. And, uh, and some of the things that went on weren't, uh, didn't have to be the way that they were if people had just uh, been managing their finances a little bit better. So we want to educate and do it in a way uh, where we can start to stamp out financial illiteracy. There's 5 billion people on the planet that don't understand how money works. Uh, we don't teach it in schools. Right here in Arizona, when you look at the demographic of people that we have here and you eliminate the quote unquote wealthy ones, the five percenters, there's 6.9 million people just in our state that uh, need, want, can afford, and would benefit from getting uh, their house in order from a money perspective. So we are an education first company. And uh, the great thing about what we do is um, our mission is deep rooted in helping families. Uh, it's very duplicatable. It's not hard to learn. Uh, it just requires a passion, a big heart, and uh, some energy to go out and be coachable and, and help people. Um, so as it says here, you know, we're a force for families, the families come first. Uh, we want to empower people to live a life where they can be financially free. Uh, entrepreneurship is tough. Uh, as Jessica said, I had my own consulting business for a while. Um, that sort of worked, but then uh, the short story about that is we, we had our first child and I got a little bit nervous about breadwinning completely on my own. So I took a job back in semiconductor world. Um, a couple of years later, we bought a franchise. While I kept that job, uh, it was okay, but it was a financial burden like you can't even imagine. And um, and then a few years later, uh, we, we ran into to what I'm doing today uh, through the, the story that I told you. And, uh, and what I saw was a, a transition that could take place, but remove a lot of the hurdles. And by the way, 62% of people surveyed today say they would love to be the boss of their own business. But due to some of the hurdles, the costs involved, the time involved, uh, creating a new marketplace, maybe if that's what they're trying to do, differentiating themselves inside of an existing uh, market space, uh, which is very challenging to do today. Um, you know, the lack of technology, the marketing uh, oftentimes stops people in their tracks. And we've just uh, laid a groundwork that solves those problems for people. Um, Again, as I said, we're education-based first. In 2020, that I didn't update this slide. I will get this updated. We provided financial education over 350,000 families. That was in the middle of a pandemic when we couldn't even meet people face to face. We were very fortunate, you know, um, as most of you know, or you wouldn't be here. There's a lot of businesses that were unable to shift. Uh, when everything went virtual. And we were, we were very fortunate that this platform had been in place for a number of years. And so for us, the shift was mostly in our heads of, I can't shake your hand, but I can look you in the eye on Zoom and show you things. And, and so our shift was just from in-person to virtual. Um, and we actually had a record year last year as a result of that. Um, the money education piece, the How Money Works uh, platform has been on over 110 television shows last year, morning shows, CNBC. Uh, they're writing their own feature articles based on our content. Uh, so this is great for two reasons. Number one, we know that our mission, our vision, and what we teach uh, is needed, wanted, and, and people are interested in it. Number two, as a business owner, uh, getting that exposure uh, is, is nearly impossible uh, to have that happen and to have that proactive nature. Uh, so the support that we get from, from our, our home office is incredible in that regard. Uh, 
we, we call it making the E to E move. Uh, part of the interview that Jessica and I did yesterday was, was this idea of, of the side hustle. And oftentimes it's a challenge because there's so many industries that, and, and things that people want to do that require stopping the current flow of money that comes into their household. And so we built what we call employee to entrepreneur. Um, this allows somebody to make a transition. Um, we call it employeepreneur, frankly. There's nothing that says you can't do that. Um, that's what I did for about a year and then uh, eventually left my corporate job. And once I had my feet underneath me in business and I was able to go full time, replace my income uh, that first year uh, as a full time entrepreneur, which is amazing. Um, and I don't tell you that to brag. I, I simply am a byproduct of everything that I'm sharing with you today. So why would somebody choose this as a path maybe for side hustle or entrepreneurship? You know, in any business, there are some, like all the businesses that are here, you look at Carvana USA today, they have all these things in place. It's, it's why they're able to grow. Uh, Carvana is an amazing, amazing story. Um, I knew who they were, but I really got to know them a little bit better when the guy on Shark Tank pitched his 3D modeling uh, software and tool. And then I followed that for a while, and uh, that's what Carvana now uses and, and to get all the pictures of their car. So it's just it's an amazing story, but they did all of these things. It's a turnkey solution. For us, it's a licensed profession, so it's not. there's some barriers to entry. Uh, we deal with people's personal information, you know, their, their money. And so they're, not just anybody can, can do what we do, but for those that can, it's a great opportunity. There's ownership. Digital marketing and media. Boy, if that is not part of somebody's plan today, uh, or their business, they're in trouble. And we have that. Uh, we let people start part-time. We have not laid off a single field agent in the entire 15 years that I've been here. Um, so that's an incredible story in, in and of itself. Uh, the market is good when the market is good, and the market is good for us when the market is bad, because it's a little bit of an awakening for people to seek out some help. Uh, the hands-on training and mentorship is priceless. Um, it comes from people that started where I did part time, um, you know, from a different industry, uh, a few, I figured out I had a few transferable skills, but I had to learn some new things. And that was all hands on from somebody that had past experience and success, which is where it, it comes the best from. And then we have a long history of helping families. So uh, what I always do with for Career Connectors is I set up an, another time because people have a lot of questions and there's some stuff to dive into. I will be in one of the breakout rooms. But today at 4.30, you can take a picture of this QR code or you can just simply send me an email at the email address and uh, we'll, we'll take an in-depth look at, at our platform, our tools, some of the things we do to help people, what the business itself looks like. And, um, you know, I'm an open book. I, there's, I'll share any, any questions you have. I'll answer them. Um, and, uh, and do my best to get you off on the right foot. So appreciate your time here today and look forward to, to spending some time with, with some of you when we're finished here today. Thank you, Jessica. Awesome, thank you so much, Jason. Um, we have definitely seen a rise in people wanting to have multiple rev streams of revenue. So this is one of those great opportunities. Um, so thanks for being here, we really appreciate it. All right, so I wanna go through a couple things in closing before we open it up to our breakout rooms. Um, if you have any feedback for us, any, um, con any evaluation on uh, speakers or content that you'd like to see or hiring companies you are interested in, shoot us a note at contact at careerconnectors.org. And every Monday morning, my team gets together to review all of the information from the previous week. So we would love to have any feedback you have. Uh, feel free to also drop it in the chat. With our corporate, here are our current corporate partners. We are so grateful for them and allowing us to run this program uh, throughout in a virtual format and then hopefully back to live soon. I don't know how soon that will be, but um, it will be great when we can get back to in person. So thank you so much to our corporate partners. We also have additional resources for you guys available. A year ago, when the pandemic hit, we partnered up with bestcompaniesaz.com and we put together a whole bunch of resources, including um, tons of companies that were hiring. So as you guys saw, um, I think just from this call today, if I add it up, we're probably around 1,400, 1,500 jobs just from the companies here today. So we are, Arizona is hiring, well, some of those jobs, obviously, the, some of the 900 um, at Carvana are outside of Arizona, but there are jobs out there. So 
I encourage you to take a look onto this website. There is a listing of many other companies that are hiring as well. I think there's um, 65 that we have with logos and links and content. And then we have another 125 that just have the company named. So there are jobs out there and we encourage you guys to um, keep your head up and keep looking for the right thing and it will come along. All right, Stephanie mentioned in, our, in her talk that we also have a DISC assessment. You are welcome to have. Um, it's free also with a partnership with Top Talent Consulting. So in addition to the Colby Index that I hope you all will take to get some insight from that perspective, the DISC assessment is also available to you at no cost. We will also be doing an event recap with this event. And so check out our blog site and um, that will be up in the next couple days with a lot of all the content from Stephanie today. And then our speakers are hiring companies as well. And then we are all over social media. So feel free to connect with us. LinkedIn is a great place to connect with us because um, companies are posting jobs in our LinkedIn group and having conversations around career transition, career transition specifically. All right, next Thursday, March 11th, calling anybody who is a veteran or who has served in the military or has uh, trailing spouses. We are doing an event for you. We do one a year and that is this event. All, of course, veterans are invited to all of our events, but this one is specifically with companies. We have about 23 companies that have a focus on um, creating a veteran friendly environment and having programs supporting veterans and those that are transitioning from the military into civilian life. So um, I'll talk about that in just a minute, the companies that are going to be there. And then on Tuesday, March 16th, we have another career event with 13 great Tempe employees. Um, this is all the employees are targeted are in Tempe, located in Tempe that are part of this event. And so, um, but anyone uh, around Arizona is invited to attend. And so you can check out that Tempe virtual job fair and I have the companies listed on a uh, slide in just a minute as well. And then we're doing another really cool event. We're just, March is just loaded you guys. <laughs> so on March 24th, we are doing an event busting the myths of the construction and trades or crafts industries. And what all the companies listed there are going to be in a panel discussion around what it looks like to work in these industries. We have a lot of the myths out there are, you know, you have to be um, a carpenter or a construction project manager to work in these industries. And that's just not the reality. We are seeing hundreds of thousands of jobs coming um, currently and in the next couple years in this industry. And, and Arizona is a, a huge shortfall of people with experience in these industries. And so we would like to show you all and have the discussion of what's out there now, what's coming, how do you transition into this industry? Um, and that's for professionals across the board. They have every type of job needed, just like any other corporation does. So I encourage you to attend that. Um, drop the chat questions. You can ask questions beforehand when you register, and we will have a really engaging, fun panel to um, have conversation with you all. All right. So our upcoming events, again, March 16th, you can get to this event uh, through tempe.gov backslash job fairs, and that we have Amazon, Amcor, uh, Arizona Custom Blends, CarMax will be there, City of Tempe, Drive Time, FedEx, Hercutech, Honor Health, Tempe Centers for Rehabilitation, uh, Varsity Tutors, Waste Management, and Zip Recruiters. So it's a full morning of great companies for you to engage with and get um, understand what kind of companies that are hiring. We are, we this is our third one that we've done for Tempe. We know we're doing at least one more that'll probably be end of April, beginning of May. We haven't picked that date yet, but, um, and then there may be more beyond that as well. Um, but we have had great attendance at these events and great job matching and job landings. And so I encourage you to join us for that call. Now our veterans event that's coming up on March 11th, that one's next week. Um, here's a list of the companies that are there right now, that are booked right now. What we're doing is we're gonna have a vet talks uh, portion of the event for about the first half hour or so. And that is going to be five companies that are going to be speaking about the culture and the benefits veterans bring to employers and how to transition in. Sheila just dropped the link also into the chat on how to register. Then 
the next hour will be an additional about 12 or 13 companies that'll be talking about what jobs they have available. And then we will have the last hour of full breakout sessions, similar to what we're doing today, but on a larger scale. So again, if you know a veteran, if you are a veteran, thank you for your service. If you are a veteran um, that will, is either retired or transitioning, um, or you know a veteran or you are, have our trailing spouse, we would encourage you to join us for that event. Now we have this really cool program that we have somebody in our community that has stepped up to offer no cost to you headshots, business portraits. And so typically at our live events, we have a professional photographer come in and take photos that you can utilize for your LinkedIn profile um, at no cost, but we don't have live events right now. So Sheila just dropped into the chat how to schedule your business portrait. We have this awesome photographer, uh, Gordon Murray with Flash Photo that is traveling around the city uh, or traveling around Arizona and doing headshots for everyone. He is phenomenal. The feedback we're getting from him about him has been so great. And so he's been doing this, I think six or eight months now uh, for us. And so there's no cost. If you would like to donate to him, you are welcome to do that. He's doing this um, just as a generous um, gift to our, our program. Um, and so take a look where we have um, March 9th, 18th, 23rd, March 4th today also. Uh, so all over Phoenix area, you can get your headshot done. Now this is our website, you guys, just a screenshot of our website. You can see there are three boxes there. This webinar from today will be posted in CC webinars. So it usually takes us, um, by tomorrow it'll be up. Uh, it depends on you know the download and how long it takes. But by tomorrow, this will be up. You can go back and review any of the content from today. Also, under community update are regular interviews that we did. And I had mentioned earlier an interview I did with Jason Wiseman at Wealthwave. And so there's some additional um, content with him there around business ownership and growing business. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. And uh, so that's our website. You can sign up for our e-updates if you're not getting them yet at careerconnectors.org. Uh, let's see, the slide for the headshots. Um, Sheila, can you drop the headshot information into the uh, chat? Somebody was asking about some more headshot information. Maybe we can put it back up at the end. Also, I wanna thank you to our awesome volunteers. You guys, we can't do this without our awesome volunteers. We have about 125 volunteers that serve every year and we're just so grateful. And so today we have a lot for you and we'll talk about that in the breakout sessions, uh, but we do need additional support. So if you are good at writing and would like to support some of our events once a month uh, or so, we need some blog writers. And that means attending the events and blogging, taking notes, during the event and then working with Sheila to get it uploaded afterwards. Uh, we would, um, Sheila would love to hear from you. She oversees all of our volunteers. And so you can contact her at Sheila at careerconnectors.org. So one of the things that we are just so grateful for is so many of you have supported Career Connectors in the last year. And I can tell you just like any organization, it was a really tough year for us to be able to continue moving forward with this program. And if it wasn't for our donors and our volunteers, I don't know how we would have made it last year. So thank you to anyone who has given any amount of money to Career Connectors. If you ever feel so in, um, called to do so, we would love your donation. It costs us $42 per person to put on these programs. And you can get to that through our careerconnectors.org backslash donate uh, website. And I, I know some of you have donated even while you're in career transition. And I just say, I'm so, I just want you to know, we are so grateful. We are so, so grateful. So thank you for any of you that are doing that. And um, for anyone that would like to donate maybe after you land your next job. Thank you for being here today. After I sign off, Sheila is going to come on and talk about the breakout sessions and how you from a tech standpoint can join each of these breakout sessions. And I just want you all to know that we are praying for you, that you land into the career of your dreams. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Jessica. You're a hard act to follow, but I will try. <laughs> So we will, um, we'll talk about the breakout rooms and I'm going to show you um,